Hi smart people, my name is Karol and this is Ads Courses, a channel where I share with you the best digital marketing secrets and web analytics tricks. Today I'm gonna share with you some tips for data visualization with Google Data Studio, but these rules will simply apply to all other visualization tools. If you find my videos helpful and interesting, consider to hit the subscribe button now. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so first I will talk about the most common chart types in Google Data Studio, and I will tell you when you should use each of these chart types, because every chart type is designed to tell a different story. And choosing the right chart type is actually the most crucial element of data visualization. And right now in Google Data Studio, we have a lot of different chart types available, and they are actually adding more from time to time. The first and the most common chart type is the column or bar chart, and you simply use it to compare two or more values. It's very powerful when you want to compare metrics from different dimensions, for example. Later in this video, I will show you bad and good examples of using each one of the chart types. Next one is line chart, and you simply use it to compare changes and visualize a trend. And it's also one of the most common chart types available. So basically, every time you want to visualize a trend, you choose a line chart. But you should be careful when you have a lot of dimension values. Like in this example, this is actually not the best example of using the line chart because it's not visible and states like Washington, Illinois are not visible good in this chart. But when you want to actually show a trend, you should use a line chart. Next one is scorecards. They are available in the Google Data Studio and it's the best way to actually show a summary of a single metric. And you can add multiple scorecards in the same page. And this is actually a best way to start your report. In most cases, they should be placed in the upper part of your report, just to show an overview, for example, of your traffic. And it's the best way to show a comparison from different time periods. So in this example, we show different website metrics like transactions, sessions, etc and we compare it to the previous time period. So it's a good way to start with scorecards and then go deeper and show more advanced chart types. Next one, it's simply tables and tables display your data in a grid of rows and columns simply. So tables are the best option when you have one dimension and you want to show multiple metrics. Right. So as in this example, we've got one dimension, which is a campaign, and we have multiple metrics like clicks, impressions, CTR, CPC, etc. And we visualize it in the table. And in Google Data Studio actually allows us to style our table a little bit so we can add heat maps or bars to the columns like in this example. And you can do it simply in the style section. So simply select your table, go to the style tab, and then you can change the type of uh, each column, like number, bar, or heat map. You can show numbers, etc. But be careful here, you don't want to show these heat maps or bars in each column every time. Sometimes it's actually better to keep it simple. Another one is tree map, and in Google Data Studio they are actually not perfect right now because you can't show the numbers. And you want to use the tree map when you want your data organized into dimension hierarchies. So as in this example, we've got traffic sources and we can see that the most traffic share is generated by social, then it's direct and then it's organic. Next one is geomap. You know, it's simply visualize how a measurement varies across a geographic area. So it could be a worldwide map, it could be a continent or country or even a region. Next we have a pie chart, pretty common chart type, and it's useful when comparing a few data points with relatively large differences in proportion between the values. So this actually is not the best example of using a pie chart. I wouldn't recommend to actually use a pie chart here. It would be better to use a horizontal bar chart to visualize this data. So basically you, you want to use pie chart when you have like four values of the same dimension and the differences between them are big. And I will show more good and bad examples of pie charts later in this video. Next, we have the bullet chart, and it's quite interesting in Google Data Studio, and they give you a way to quickly see how well a given metric is performing against uh, target benchmarks. So you simply set up your goal, 
and you can track this goal accomplishment in time. So it's a good solution for reports or dashboards. And now I will share with you my top 10 data visualization tips. I will show you good and bad examples for each of them. So the first one is to choose the chart that tells the story because you always want to tell a story with your data visualization. This is what data visualization is for, to tell a story, to show something, right? To make it more clear to the eye and choosing the right chart type or styling the chart properly will give you the ability to actually tell a story because the story needs to be easy to read. And in this example, the bad example on the left, we have this pie chart. We actually have the pie chart in both examples, but on the left, we have this pie chart where uh, 70, almost 78% of the chart is others, as you can see in the legend. We don't know what other is. It's actually most of the chart. So telling a story from this chart is very difficult. And on the right, we have a better example of using the pie chart. We have only three dimension values. We've got desktop, mobile and tablet. And we also have a simple title, revenue by device. So we know what this chart type is about. And we can easily tell, tell that 76% of revenue is generated by desktop. Another example of telling a story with your charts is this one. We've got actually the same story in both examples, good and bad. And with the bad, we use the pie chart, which is not the best option for this story to tell. We even got this legend, but it doesn't make it clear actually to tell anything from this chart. And on the right, we've got a better example of visualizing the same story, but using the bar chart. So these are the transactions per hour, and we actually split the hours into groups. And we can easily tell that from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. we generate the most transactions. So it's the same story, the same data, but we can visualize it differently. Okay, so another example is displayed here. We've got our bad and good example of telling a story with our title. Actually, the bad example here is not that bad because it's still a simple title, you know what it is, it's quite okay. But you could go further, like in this, you know, example on the right, and you could tell a story with your title, but you need to be cautious with that. You don't want to tell the same thing that is actually on your chart. Sometimes simple is better. Okay, the second tip is to keep it simple. You know, sometimes it's not easy to keep it simple because of how much data you actually need to show, but still you can simplify it. And in this bad example, this is actually the most common mistake that people make, the, the most common uh, chart type that I see, and it's completely hard, it's completely unreadable. And on the right, we've got a better example of visualizing the same data. This is actually a traffic source, so there is still a lot of data, but it's easier to read. We can actually make conclusions from this chart. So even if you have a lot of data, a lot of dimensions and metrics, you can make it simpler with proper data visualization. And the third one is don't over explain, because you should use titles for your charts or scorecards but you need to keep them simple. And in this bad example, we actually write the same thing that is within the scorecard. Transactions are down by 33% compared to 2018. But we could actually write the same thing a way simpler, like in the good example, simply 2019 versus 2018. And that's it. And the scorecards tells the story themselves. Okay, next one is to use a single color to represent the same type of data. Because again, sometimes less is more. So let's start with the good example. We have the iOS user's age and Android user's age. And we simply use the same color for each operating system. And we show sessions here. And we use the bar chart, which is the better solution in this example. And we have the same story shown on the left. And we use a pie chart and we have a lot of colors. And it's actually misleading because the green color on the Android user's age chart is different age than the iOS user's age. So it's difficult to read, it's misleading. Sometimes using only one color, it's way better. Okay, the fifth one is also related to colors and you should make sure that there's sufficient contrast between colors. It may seem obvious, but a lot of people actually make mistakes like that because you can tell a story with your color. Like in the good example, actually the color tells us the same thing as the chart itself or as the numbers. But on the left, 
it doesn't you know it's almost the same color we don't see the contrast here so the color itself can tell a story okay another one is don't use more than six colors in a single layout simple as that and i have examples in here good example we only use one color and again we use the bar chart which is better in this example and we have the mobile device branding here and sessions and we actually see labels in here it's, it's more readable than the one on the left it's the same story we use a pie chart we use a lot of colors it doesn't look that good it's more difficult to actually read data from it okay number seven is use labels but don't over label because you can label data in google data studio that doesn't mean that you always should use these labels and in this example on the left as you can see you can't see anything the numbers the labels are unreadable and in the good example we actually don't use labels at all because in this example it's better to not use them because you still have the option to hover over the chart and see the actual numbers and in this example it's better to not use the labels okay another example of labels are in here uh, on the right we use labels and we can tell the actual numbers from them they are visible and on the left we don't use labels and it's actually difficult to tell how many sessions are generated from certain brands like Samsung. I can tell that it's almost 5000 but I don't know exactly how many. So when it is possible you should use labels but only when they are visible. Okay number eight is add hierarchy to your data and here I talk about the pages because you can create multiple pages within the same report in google data studio and you should name the pages and you should order them properly so in the bad examples we've got the first page is conversion funnel then we have users detail conversions event general overview is the last one it doesn't make any sense it's chaotic and in the good example it's more like a book right we've got our first page which is a general overview the most crucial data it's in there then we go deeper to the user details then even deeper to events and then we have conversions and conversion funnel okay number one is create correct data order and this is important when you use bar charts like in this example we've got the same story android brands in both examples so we see the sessions from certain device brands and in the bad example we sort the chart by device branding so we, we can't tell a story from this but on the right we order the data by sessions so we can easily tell that samsung generates the most sessions and the last one number 10 is to keep chart and graph headers simple and to the point because you should use titles but they should be really like to the point simple as they could be and maybe this uh, bad example is quite funny but you should not use the static text over your charts because you, you need to actually change them every time you generate the report but it also you know it's unnecessary your titles should be as simple as it could and even this good example here strawberry sales by month it could even be better you could easily go with strawberry sales or even better could be strawberry revenue or strawberry transactions it would be more clear than sales right so again here simple is better with these rules your presentation reports and dashboards will be useful informative and easy to read if you have any questions or want to share your ideas, you can do this in the comment section below. If you don't want to miss any other of my videos, simply subscribe. That's all for today. Bye.